Hello everyone, Nick again here with Scoggin Nicky. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. And of course, we are here in our new SEMA gear. We are super excited for SEMA first week of November next month. If you happen to be in the area or coming to the show, please stop by and say hello to us. We'd love to talk to you guys. But today, we're gonna continue on our series talking about the internal component components inside of your LS, LT, or domestic V8 engine, or pretty much any engine these days. And the last couple of ones we haven't talked about right now are bearings and piston rings. And today we're gonna to talk about bearings. We're gonna dispel a couple myths, and we're gonna talk about the different types. Most people think this is just a stamped piece of metal, either made out of aluminum, or maybe a couple different pieces of material, and it really doesn't matter. Well, I can tell you that it does. There's actually quite a bit of technology and design that goes into these things, whether you're doing an OEM style rebuild, whether you have a stock vehicle that you're trying to boost, some of you junkyard turbo guys, we know you guys are going a little crazy with these things, or some of you guys that are building an engine maybe for off-road racing, you know, maybe somebody's drifting, road course, autocross, stuff like that. These bearings are actually made in different ways to handle different environments. So we're gonna discuss that. Now here at Scott Nikki, we carry a long line of engine bearings. You can see the ones in front of me here, of course, you know, Clevite, Durabond, we even have some calico coated, coated bearings where we send off Clevite bearings to have them coated by calico. Very nice coating, very, very good company to deal with. We also deal with ACL and King, as well as a few others. Now, <clears throat> if you're wondering what bearing should I choose? I can tell you the brands that I have in front of me as well as others, almost all of them are a very, very high quality brand. All of these can be used in one way, shape, form, or another. So what we're gonna be discussing today is not picking one brand or another, but discussing what they offer and what fits your build. And that's specifically what we're gonna be talking about. Now, one of the first things I'd like to get out of the way, a lot of people think that these bearings touch like a crankshaft or the connecting rod when you're you know running your engine they don't they're actually kind of a sacrificial piece of metal that goes in between the crank and the block or in the case of the rod and the crank and they are designed to size up the oil gap in between to be absolutely perfect and that's pretty detrimental now if you're thinking well then what's the point of having them at all? Why wouldn't you just run straight rod to crank? I can tell you that some small engines do that. Some of you that might have taken apart like an old, you know, weed eater or lawnmower like I did when I was a kid, they didn't have a rod or, or a rod bearing at all. They usually had, you know, uh, roller bearings on the side case, but they didn't have anything at all. When that thing got trashed, they just threw it away. And that's specifically the thing. This is sacrificial, so when something goes wrong, or if you have a real high strung engine, and at the end of the race season, you need to rebuild it, you're replacing maybe a few hundred dollars in bearings, maybe, instead of thousands of dollars in rods and a crankshaft and you're having to get all this stuff rebalanced and remachined. So that's another benefit here for some of the guys that like to go big on racing. The actual oil film inside of this while an engine is running creates something that's called a hydrodynamic wedge. And while you might be seeing 40, 50 PSI at wide open throttle, what you're actually seeing in between a crank journal and the bearing surface is a lot higher than that. As this is winding up with RPM, it really creates a high load film of oil. It's a pretty big deal because if you've noticed, maybe your old dad's truck or maybe some of the old trucks I still drive, they use a thicker film of oil. And now they're getting thinner and thinner and they're going to synthetics. So a lot of this specification of how close this needs to be in diameter to the journal diameter of the crankshaft is a pretty big deal. So now that we've discussed how this technically is never supposed to have any metal to metal contact, now you're probably wondering, then why does it matter what it's made out of? If this never truly touches the rotating metal and all it's doing is holding oil and it's making sure that that gap is absolutely perfect when you're setting up your bearing clearances, what's the point of that? You have you know, your tri-metal, <coughs> bi-metal, you know, coated bearings, well, what's the point? It doesn't matter, does it? It actually really does. And I'm gonna tell you a couple things it does. Just like other things inside of your engine, these actually do transfer heat. Your engine is liquid cooled with a cooling system, unless you've got an air cooled engine, but it's also oil cooled. And it's oil cooled through a lot of different ways. One of those ways though, is through the bearing. The bearing is designed to transfer heat from the oil, from rotating components into the block and into other you know, structures inside. 
if you try to use bearings that aren't designed to handle that kind of taller or that kind of beating, you can actually wipe one of these out that way. It's not very common, but it does happen. Some of the biggest things that causes a bearing to wipe out really is oil contamination. 80% of the time, that's exactly what these manufacturers will say if you talk to them in person. If you wipe out a bearing, the oil has been so contaminated, it's been broken down, it's gotten as thin as water, it no longer holds its ability to properly maintain that oil pressure, that oil lining, that thin film, and it finally does get that metal to metal contact, and you, zip, you wipe one out, and it starts looking like one of these things. This is a tri-metal bearing. This is actually a race-coated bearing and uh, one, of the, one of our customers who got a few seasons out of it and unfortunately ran into some tuning issues and blew one out. And you can actually see the copper layer that's inside of it. I'll talk about that in a second for the tri-coated bearing, the tri-metal bearings, I mean. So now that we've talked about that, what are those differences? A bimetal bearing, very simply, exactly like it sounds, two metals. The outside is gonna be a thin layer of steel the inside is gonna be a thin layer of aluminum. This is what's used in almost all OEM applications and has since kind of the beginning. And these are actually really robust. They can handle high tolerance uh, variations. You know, when you're manufacturing an engine on high scale, you can't pay an employee to sit there and make sure the crankshaft and the block is true perfection. You're gonna have some tolerances. You're gonna to have some, a little bit of this way, a little bit of that way, a little loose, a little snug. These can handle the abuse when those tolerances aren't 100% perfect. And that's good. That's what we need when we're towing, taking you know uh, the wife out to dinner, or the kids to school, and you're running errands and doing all that stuff. You need something that's gonna get hundreds of thousands of miles put on it. As long as you take care of the oil, it's gonna live for a long time. These actually can be used for performance applications. Truth be told, GM actually went to some coated bearings in some of the later performance engines, kind of what you'd see like an LT5, I think the LT4 and the LS7 did too. And they did it on a bimetal bearing. They utilized the longevity that this bearing offers, but with a coating for that extra, extra protection, that extra slick to really help. So bimetal, then there's trimetal. Now, these still have a steel backing on them. That's what gives it its strength, but there is a copper layer on the middle layer, and that the layer that you see here might be a babbit of some kind, a mixture of a certain alloy of tin, or just aluminum as well. And of course, like I showed you before, that is what you can see on this torn up bearing here even better on this main one that really got chewed up. You can see that golden copper right there that they finally chewed through and got it. What is the point of having these metals? These metals actually are slightly softer, but that softer, metal means it can handle much more load and abuse. You might be thinking how much. A typical bimetal bearing can handle anywhere from five to nine, maybe 10,000 PSI of load. A tri-metal bearing, especially one that's been coated or something that's really, really high dollar, that's really gone through the rigors of testing for racing can handle 15,000 PSI or more of load. So it's kind of a big deal. The other thing that it helps with is embeddability. And what I'm talking about here is oil contamination. You have perfectly clean oil, it's gonna get some dust in it, debris, dirt, <clears throat> or maybe even other contaminants from inside your engine if something else is going wrong. Usually with a bimetal bearing, that will get flushed out, pushed out to the side, you'll suck it back up through and put it through the oil filter. In a typical production engine, that's fine. A high-end race engine, actually, the softer surface metal here can actually take those super fine microscopic contaminants and actually get embedded in the surface of this. Well, that holds it away. It holds it away from the journals and the crankshaft so you can still run, not get it mixed up in your oil system, but not ruin the surface of the crank either. It's actually something in testing has proven to be very, very beneficial. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions today. While these might seem like the simplest part of building your engine, you might just kind of grab the ones that come with your rebuild kit and go on down the road, and that's usually okay. There actually is a lot of technology and a lot of specifics behind this. If you have any further questions about this, if you're doing a build and you want to know if your stock bearings are going to work in your LS, if you're going to like a Turbo 5.3 or maybe, you know, a Camd LS3 or something like that, please give us a ring. If you guys are starting to go real hardcore endurance racing or something like that, we'll be able to help answer some of the questions on what you would need so your build can live a little longer.
We appreciate you stopping by for another tech video. Stop by next week. We're going to be talking about piston rings. And right before we go to SEMA, we're going to follow up with the big controversial one, engine break-in. So see you guys next week for another tech video.